All right, I'll scout out the base campsite deep in the hemlock wood. When I get back to the homestead, I'll get my horse saddled up and pack a summer's worth of supplies to this region. Look at the size of that pine. Magnificent. I need to watch for wildlife, tracks, spore, and see what's going on with... Wow. Look at those trees. Gorgeous. Where was I? See what's going on with the fungal kingdom. Been walking for miles. I'd love to find a big mushroom back in these woods for dinner. Way too early for that though. Earth yearns for spring, as night for the dawn. And for my part, I am delighted to see the majority of the snow god, the sun waxing in strength, and the strange rekindling of life throughout the forest. Strange because it seems to go both at the pace of sap on a winter's day, and at the same time flits by like a hummingbird wing. Indeed, it seems that only a moment ago these colt's foot blossoms were but a promise in the soil. As I ambled the gentle springtime forest, warm where sunbeams filtered through the trees, the snow yet hiding in the persistent shadows, the idea came upon me this cold spring day that I might enjoy a cup of mango tea. Yes indeed, a cup of mango tea made from abundant local resources would be just the thing to drive away the spring chill, though I would think any rational person would not be inclined to think we're going to find mango trees here in the Northwoods. But happily, I know just how to find it. This here is the telltale of the northern mango tree, otherwise known as the eastern white pine, or scientifically as Pinus strobus. It drops large pine cones from three and a quarter to six and a quarter inches long. The pine cones are large scaled, and the scales have a pale white over rusty brown color. You can usually tell this tree on sight because it is self-pruning, and branches in shadow will fall away, revealing pale, straight and graceful trunks. In midlife it grows numerous slender branches, but this long-lived tree, which can reach up to 250 years old, will one day come to tower over all others, often sporting lush but ragged tops, composed of great branches, whose growth pattern reveals the prevailing winds and the storm trials the tree has endured. Because the white pine can become so huge, each tree can become an ecosystem, supporting a world of bacteria and fungi and small insects, mammals and birds that thrive up and down their towering trunks. The branches of the eastern white pine are lush, thick with pine needles, and of a pale blue-green hue. But given that they are naturally self-pruning, when one walks about beneath them, it is possible to develop a sense that one is in a tended parkland and you will often find various deciduous trees as well as spruces and other conifers growing among them. And due to their self-pruning habit, it is common to find small bits with needles, as well as whole needle-laden branches, laying on the ground. It is natural for the tree to shed these and does not mean that it is in poor health. Its needles are long, flexible, and finely serrated. If you rub your finger down the edge of a needle, it will feel a bit like rubbing fine sandpaper and the needles grow in fascicles, or groups of five, rarely three or four. And this is a good tree to know. The tree is non-toxic, and food can be derived from its pollen, its pine nuts, its cambium, and that interestingly scented mango tea from its pine needles. However, pregnant women might want to avoid pine as a food or tea source, as some pines are known to lead to miscarriages, particularly in cattle. It is also important to know that some pines, such as the ponderosa pine, are poisonous, so do be sure you know which pine you're working with. Though the trees around me are tall, many more than 30 meters, it is easy enough to collect the pine needles to make the tea. Because the trees are self-pruning, small branches of them are all over the ground. The needles themselves are long and flexible, almost like very coarse hair. Sometimes they pull easily away from the branch, and others they have to be cut clear. 
The ones I can pull away are extra long, and I'll cut those in half or even down to thirds so they can steep in the tea water more easily. There's no wind today, so I'll boil the tea over a light alcohol stove I often keep in my pack. It's always tricky starting those little buggers. They start easier on hot days when the alcohol is more inclined to make a vapor. The tea leaves themselves have a subtle flavor, and I like my tea strong, so I use about one teacup worth of needles for every cup of water I'm going to steep. And while we're waiting to get the tea going, let's talk about how it is that a pine tree has a flavor so similar to mangoes. I mean, that should be the obvious question, right? Well, even though the mango tree and the eastern pine tree are so taxonomically different, they share an interesting commonality. Five of the six chemicals that are responsible for the flavor of mangoes are found in eastern pine trees. They are apinine, b-pinene, limonene, myrcene, and camphene. These chemicals, known as monoterpenes, are common to the pine tree and also to mango trees as well. And it's a good thing for me, after a long hike in the shadows of a cold day, it's great to be able to settle down in the north woods with a cup of something tropical, made locally. Thank you for watching. The Naturalist program is committed to the reliable coverage of all matter of topics relating to natural science, from ecology and conservation, to the nature of the universe beyond our Earth, and making that information practical with solid advice on living well with the natural world. If you appreciate the program, please take a moment to subscribe. Subscribing costs nothing and never will, but it sure helps a lot.